uh, Alexander Refsom Jensenius. He is professor at the music at the University of Oslo and co-director of the Ritmo Center of Excellence there. Uh, yeah, his uh, main focus it's uh, music and movement. I think that kind of summarizes uh, his main interests, and uh, he is doing a lot in that, uh, both from a research and an artistic perspective. Uh, he is a very influential figure, figure in the NIME community, community and the computer music community. So new instruments for musical expression. And yeah, I'm very interested uh, in hearing uh, what Alexander has to tell us today about his long-standing experiment on human standstill. Um, I uh, am working at the University of Music Technology, and you can say that my research is within a field of embodied music technology, where I'm particularly looking at uh, kind of the intersection between embodied music cognition and new interfaces for musical expression. And my approach is also very much that of kind of trying to combine art and science, so that um, thinking of working both as a music researcher and as a re research musician, and kind of what I'll present today, also some of this uh, this work I've been doing. Just to talk a little bit about terminology before we get started with showing some some uh, different different results, um, and uh, I'm particularly interested in trying to understand more about differences between motion, action, and gesture. And just to clarify the way I'm using these terms, um, I'm thinking about motion as the displacement of the body uh, in time and space. Um, and for some time, I was working primarily with what could be called like a meso level motion. That's kind of the norm of motion that we we do. Um, most actions are are in this range. Um, that kind of like doing something with your hand, etc. And could be said to fall within kind of the short term memory that we have from half a second up to five, perhaps ten seconds. And also in terms of space, uh, somewhere in the centimeter range. Um, uh, everything that goes beyond that in kind of time and space would be call, called macro in my world and uh, anything kind of below that would be called micro. And I've been then previously working a lot on the meso level and what I present today is will be more on the micro level here, really kind of small stuff and how we can understand more about the body, um, the body's micro motion. Uh, when I'm talking about action, I'm thinking about more goal-directed, voluntary um, uh, motion sequences um, that can be either repetitive or, or kind of uh, singular. And I'm particularly interested in also relationships between action and sound, uh, being a music researcher. And then finally, gesture is, um, in my thinking, related to the meaning-bearing component of, of this, where you have the action and or sound um, uh, that could possibly be combined to think about like a musical gesture as this type of com combination of the continuous flow of both motion. So I uh, then started looking into the, the topic of human micromotion from an artistic point of view in a project called Svarm. And the idea here was to see how we could really work with uh, micromotion uh, from um, an artistic point of view. So together with a dancer and choreographer, we started standing still together in our lab. Um, and uh, we stood still for 10 minutes at a time. And what we discovered was that we had these micro motion patterns um, that were kind of these small fluctuations of our bodies. And here we measured this with a motion capture marker on the top of our head. Um, and um, we can then see these fluctuations then over time. This is a six minute sequence here. And uh, as you would expect, there are differences in the different directions. And set is the uh, the vertical here. So that's kind of the how your, uh, your head is moving up or down. And here's kind of a slightly kind of um, moving downwards type of trend in, in this. And then you have the pattern. This is kind of the, the uh, Y here is the back and forth. Uh, where you can kind of see the most motion happening because this is also where uh, uh, you, you kind of uh, you're, you're rocking back and forth while you're standing. This, um, these type of graphs and try to understand more about what's going on here and, and also how we could use this in uh, music performance. 
So we continued some of this exploration, uh, also adding uh, some um, more musical activities into this and seeing how it's possible to also explore this um, uh, to create sound using uh, real-time motion capture. I don't think I'll play these examples now in the interest of, of time. Um, then we moved on to include some more dancers and musicians in, in this. Um, we decided to set up a performance. So we created then a performance, uh, which was a 45 minute show. Um, the idea was um, that we would explore uh, human micromotion in an artistic context. And um, this is a fast forward version of uh, like a 20 second version of a 45-minute show. Uh, so now you see people move, but in the actual performance, very little happened. Um, and uh, to our surprise, uh, people actually really enjoyed this. Um, we thought that many people would be bored by, by this type of, of thing, but uh, we had eight shows and, and uh, with full seats every time. And um, we had split this into different Uh, pieces like we can explore different micro motion, micro actions, and also uh, micro sound uh, and micro interaction um, in this. Um, so these pieces were from five to eight minutes long, and we were then able to um, kind of exploit really some of the potentials of uh, playing with space and time uh, here. Um, I'll get back to some of the summaries of this later, but just to give you an, an example or kind of an idea of where we're coming from. We also made a series of art videos where we explored this in an audiovisual uh, format, uh, again, playing with different types of uh, uh, kind of the, the space and time. And this is some, somehow similar to what Birgitta and, um, oh, that won't full screen, that's strange, what Birgitta and Clemens just presented and kind of trying to play with, with um, the sense of motion uh, in space and time in this, uh, these videos that were made for installation purposes. Now, that was um, the Sven project, um, which started then from an artistic point of view. Um, then from these artistic activities, I saw that there were so many interesting scientific activities. So uh, we decided to uh, then create a more scientific uh, project coming out of this, where I've been running experiments. And here the starting point was really to see if we could um, could think about how the, the how music influences people and people's micromotion. Um, Typical music moves people, um, but we really wanted to see if this is this is true uh, when people really try to stand still. So to do that, we organized um, the championship of standstill uh, many times. Um, we have done that uh, over five years now. Um, we should have done it last year too, but that couldn't be done because of Corona. Um, and the idea here has been then to uh, play music to people um, and then have silence as well. So it's kind of a combination of uh, musical uh, excerpts and uh, and silence activities uh, during uh, six minutes. Um, and the task for people is really just to stand as still as possible uh, on the floor. Um, and we have uh, over the years varied the type of musical material that we have used, everything from very simple metronome beats to more elaborate uh, music. Um, and we have looked at and trying to understand what's going on and, and if there is an influence of the music and what that influence is. Um, just to re briefly mention some of the findings is that we do find that people move uh, a little more when they are exposed to music. Um, we see that rhythmic music um, makes people move more than other types of music. Um, and also that somewhat complex music uh, works better than uh, like pure metronome uh, music. In terms of tempo, we also see that uh, uh, music at a rate of around 120 BPM does indeed move people more than, for example, 80 or 90 BPM or faster, 140 and 150. And we also see that uh, some of the motion patterns that we, we have find here, um, they, they show fractal qualities as well. Um, but of course, it's a very noisy signal, a very, very, it's a very kind of small scale that we are looking at. 
We also did um, some follow-up studies, including uh, a study uh, done by Agata Zelchowska, a PhD student of mine, and she was interested in also seeing uh, whether there was a difference with people um, uh, standing still with headphones or with speakers. And um, we did find that there is a difference. Um, when people listen to headphones, they move a little bit more um, than with speakers. And um, there are many reasons for this, uh, possibly, but I, I won't go into that now. She also found that people um, that score high on empathic concern also move uh, a little bit more than others. So that's also uh, supporting some other theories that uh, we have seen uh, results of from also more large, uh, larger movement studies. I could also mention that we now have also released the Oslo Standstill database as a, uh, an open uh, data source where we have um, uh, data from all the championships uh, are already released and we are working on also releasing uh, data from um, the headphone speaker experiment at the moment. Um, so this is a resource for the people to check out if you are interested in uh, looking at some of this data and use it for your own, your own research. But let me get then back to some kind of general thoughts based on all these experiments on uh, micromotion in space and time. And there are three things I wanted to mention here in the end. Um, one is that of what we call the spatial temporal matrix. Um, this is something we developed as part of the Swine project and it was really a tool uh, for us to work with um, different levels of, uh, of uh, the body uh, in space and time. Um, and the idea here is, is to split up um, time and space into three different levels, micro, meso and macro, where normal stuff, as I mentioned, would be here in the middle. Normal actions would be like a meso, meso type of, of um, action. Um, we have been interested in looking at the more extremes, for example, micro micro, which would be very small and very short, but also micro in time uh, and uh, macro in space, for example, uh, and micro in space and macro in time. So, I mean, these com combinations and even also macro macro. So, really trying to look at what's going on when you're really stretching this beyond uh, what we would normally uh, think of. And uh, in the artistic explorations, we use this uh, matrix as a tool so that we could say that now we're going to do a set of um, actions in micro, macro, space and time. Uh, and then all the performers would use that as, as kind of the cue for what they would, would do. Um, another thing that we have explored and looked at um, in this work is what, it, um, uh, what I would call states and actions. So um, from from a performance point of view, um, when you are in a state, for example, standing still or doing some kind of continuous repetitive task, this is something that's just going on uh, from, uh, and it doesn't really end, it's, it's just there, it's, it's happening, it's like your body is moving. Well, an action is something that you do. Uh, of course, an action can have a duration, and you can also think about also extending an action so that it becomes, if you, if you have an action in macro time, for example, it would perhaps also be more or less the same as a state. Um, but what we found out is that it feels very differently for the performer um, to have an intention to say that you are going to to have kind of the an action that that lasts for 10 minutes is very different than just standing still for 10 minutes and that also will influence the performance um, and an action of course can also have different qualities it's not really just kind of a, a point in time it also has uh, uh, it can be an impulsive thing it can be also sustained or it can be an iterative task or different ways of using uh, these type of states and actions in, um, uh, in, our, in our performance. The final thing I wanted to mention, which is also something we played with, is this idea of excitation and resonance. So this, again, is coming from an action sound perspective, where the idea is that you excite something and then uh, you get the resonance out of this. Um, we try to see if this is also possible to do kind of in pairs. So it's it's a bit odd, um, but it still kind of helped our thinking also when it came to exploring these ideas of, of um, time and space and, and action and sound, where we would play with the idea that, for example, two dancers would kind of have an exit, play an ex or perform an excitation in their uh, action, and the other one would kind of perform a resonance to this. So it would be kind of a back and forth type of thing. Um, we would do the same thing also between action and sound. 
so that you would have a dancer move and then a, a singer in this case um, uh, and kind of explore the same ideas and then also you, using the spatial temporal matrix to uh, to do this so that you we can have a very short micro action for example and kind of then uh, a long prolonged uh, macro uh, sound so uh, again very unnatural but very fun to play with and also then um, do this sound sound so this was also what we uh, ended up using again in the in this one performances so that kind of summarizes uh, what I wanted to say, I guess, here. Um, really just giving you a sneak peek into some of the things we have been working on um, in, uh, over the last 10 years now uh, here at University of Oslo uh, on, on the topic of human uh, micromotion. Yeah, thank you very much, Alexander. Um, it's really, I, I keep being amazed how much you can see and uh, when people start standing still and uh, how much you actually have been able to, to do with that. and. Uh, and see with it both artistically and in terms of yeah and really some some nice results there with uh, the motion grams as well